In this video, we are going to demonstrate GeoMagic for SOLIDWORKS. And for this particular one, we're going to um, spend some time showing some of the mesh editing tools um, and uh, clean up the scan data and basically show you what you can do with that. Uh, now, GeoMagic for SOLIDWORKS is a add-on product to SOLIDWORKS. Uh, it's made by GeoMagic, uh, which you may know makes uh, traditionally standalone products for reverse engineering and inspection. So basically what GeoMagic for SOLIDWORKS is, is a subset of their standalone product called DesignX. But the key thing is it's integrated right here in SOLIDWORKS. So the advantage of that is you have all your normal SOLIDWORKS uh, tools like, uh, you know, sketching and features and all of that. But now you have a tab with very specific tools um, to work with 3D scan data. Because as you may know, uh, normally when you import 3D scan data, uh, such as an STL file into GeoMagic for SOLIDWORKS, you really can't do anything with it. You can look at it. You can't measure it. You can't cut sections through it. It's, it's you know, really difficult to do much with it. So they have a whole suite of tools for surfacing, uh, generating sketches, cutting sections, freeforms, etc. And we have some other videos that go into that. For this specific video, we're going to show you more of an organic shape part that was 3D scanned. And if you look closely, you know, it wasn't the best scan job done. Uh, there's areas missing. You can see all of the, the uh, backside of the triangles is yellow, and you can see that exposed all the way through here. So, you know, this is not uh, untypical uh, for various reasons. Um, scanners can't maybe reach all the data uh, or, you know, or whatever. So we're going to clean this up. We'll put it in a coordinate system because right now, um, if you look at it on any given angle, it's just in, in, in whatever scanner space. So scanners typically, unless you define a coordinate system ahead of time, the part's just going to come in in some uh, some kind of crazy coordinates okay so what we'll do first is over here are most of your mesh editing tools um, the first thing we'll do is we're going to run the repair command okay and so you can see the scan data is picked and we're going to diagnose the mesh and what that's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to look for all of these things unless I uncheck the box but we basically want to look for everything here uh, you know intersections uh, where we're Triangles are maybe intersecting over themselves, small components, small holes, non-manifold, small tunnels, uh, you know, etc. So you can see this one has quite a few issues. Uh, we can do a preview of it or, and again, it highlights a lot of them in red so you can see them. Uh, or we'll just go ahead and, and take it and see what happens. So this command will take a minute to process because this is a pretty large uh, file right here so we'll go ahead and pause the video until the uh, until it finishes okay so it stopped here and you can see uh, what it's done it's cleaned it up uh, it took about three minutes to process because this is about two million uh, triangles here which we're going to reduce uh, here shortly but it cleaned it up uh, filled in a lot of those holes cleaned up a lot of the edges so that's usually the the first thing we can do uh, there's another command called a uh, remesh in here. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and show the edges because scan data is just triangles. And you can see this is very high quality, very small triangle size. Um, you know, you can see as we zoom out, it's, it's very, very dense. Okay. So it's, it's, uh, it's not CAD at this point. It's just scan data. And we'll talk more about turning it into CAD here later, but it's done a pretty good job cleaning up a lot of that stuff. Uh, next thing we could do is a remesh. Um, and that will re-triangulate the mesh and give you more uh, even triangles and further just try to, to uh, repair it. And you wouldn't necessarily do all of these commands uh, like I'm doing, but it uh, just kind of depends on, on the quality of the scan data. So again, we'll go ahead and take the defaults and, uh, and let this run. So once again, we paused it. It took a couple of minutes to process again because it's a pretty good sized file. And uh, again, let's take a look at our edges. So it just tries to smooth everything out, equalize the uh, mesh size, give it a nice clean mesh, but it's still a, a very dense mesh. So the next thing we're going to do, uh, because we really don't uh, need it to be so high, and we're going to um, uh, do a command that's uh, called simplify, um, and it's also uh, referred to as uh, uh, defeaturing uh, or decimating, I should say. Uh, not defeaturing, decimate it, and let's go down to, let's try 30% uh, of its original size, 
uh, and we'll go ahead and let that process uh, and let's get it started and I'll explain what that is. So by um, decimating it, um, it's going to reduce the um, triangle, but it's going to do it in an intelligent way. What it's going to do is uh, basically try to make larger triangles in the flatter areas, uh, but yet keep smaller triangles in the tighter areas um, so that the part still looks good um, and still is very accurate, uh, but try to reduce that triangle count because when you have a large triangle count, everything takes longer, um, and uh, it's just you know it's it's more uh, it, you know it just takes longer to do everything. It's more work for the system. Um, so it's it's done. Let's go ahead and look at our edges. So now you can notice right away we have you know quite a few uh, uh, much less uh, uh, triangles here, and you can see it in these flatter areas. Uh, you know the triangles are bigger, but yet in the curved areas over in here, you can see we still have uh, a lot of triangles. So this really helps in reducing that uh, that target size. So there's what we have so far. Uh, we've uh, cleaned up a lot of the floating data, bad intersections, all the things with the uh, repair tool. We remeshed it. That kind of further cleans it up and tries to even everything out. And then we uh, simplified it. Now, uh, we want this to be a watertight mesh. And right now, it's not. Right now, you can see there's still a lot of holes in it. Um, and uh, so we still need to do some further repair. So let's go ahead and try the uh, fill holes command. Uh, and there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can do flat holes, you can do um, uh, tangent holes, you know, uh, curvature fill holes. Um, and we can do one or two things. We can simply just come up, um, you know, select what, what type we want first and uh, pick the hole. And you can see, and it use what's, uses what's called, let's just do a couple different ones here. It uses what's called curvature based hole filling. So it's going to look at the surrounding area and it's going to try to, you know, fill it in um, based on that so that it's a nice smooth transition compared to, um, you know, all the other areas. So let's go ahead and try the fill all commands and see if we have success. But if we don't want to use that, you simply just, you know, highlight the one and it'll it'll fill it in. So let's go ahead and run the fill all and see how that works. Okay, so if we take a look here, uh, it looks pretty good. It's uh, it's filled in, I believe, all of the holes. Well, let me take a quick look around it, okay? So, you know, it's done a pretty good job. The bottom, um, you know, was pretty rough. We may try trimming that off. We'll show that here in a minute. Um, but, you know, overall, I'd say it looks, you know, pretty good. Um, you know, if the holes are really big and messy, there's only so much it can do. But that just shows you some of the capability to take a mesh that, you know, basically needed some work, clean it up, uh, and uh, and in this case, fill in all the holes. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Okay, so let's take a look at this a little more. Now, there's a couple things we can also do. We can smooth the model. Now, this command, though, smooths the entire model. And let's say I just want to clean up some areas in here. So there's other ways I might try to do that. So, for example, these kind of big chunks that may or may not, uh, 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 you know, supposed to be there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit the model. And I can use this lasso command. You can see it's um, um, uh, like I'm showing here. And I can window in on an area. Now, when I do the lasso command, let's break this up. I like to uh, have it set so that I'm selecting through the model. And the reason being is if I don't do that and there's some under cuts and it doesn't get them in the view, then I'll miss it. Now, obviously, if I do that, I'm going to get the back side. So I just come in and unselect those areas. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and delete those um, those triangles in that area. And you can see what it's done there. And then now I can exit out and then go back to that fill hole command and just fill that hole back in. So again, that's going to give me that curvature based hole filling uh, and we can exit that command. So you don't have all the, the uh, tools like you would in a in a design X, but you know, you have enough of them in here to clean up a lot of. Them. So again, I'll do it one more time. Uh, let's edit that and we'll just draw in the area we want. Uh, let's add a little more to that, get that area a little bigger. And again, I will roll around and unselect the backside. 
And let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, and then we can uh, exit out and then back into the uh, fill hole command. Okay, so that's that's one way you can kind of uh, clean up the data in a certain area. So back to the smooth command again, um, it'll smooth it out and kind of get rid of all the bumps and stuff, but it's going to do it on the whole part. So if I see just certain areas uh, I, I want to smooth, one way to do it is just to kind of delete that area and then fill it back in. So at this point, I can take a look at it and say, hey, that looks pretty good. Um, next thing we're going to do is set up a coordinate system. Okay, so to set up the coordinate system, we are going to use some tools in um, the uh, GeoMagic uh, for SolidWorks. Uh, the first one being a reference plane. And basically, I'm going to build some planar geometry. I'm going to extract it from the, uh, you know, from the, um, the scan data uh, to, to build it. So, for example, I'm going to select the whole bottom here. You know, or, or most of it, right? We'll get a lot of it there. And what that's going to do then is, uh, and we got Let's uh, probably should have turned off through for this particular command. Let's see if I can get rid of most of it. There we go. So oh, let's get rid of. So what it's going to do is it's going to basically take all the selected data and try to average a plane through it. So you can kind of see what it's done there. So it's basically going to take all of that red and fit a plane and average it through that scan data. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take it. You can see that becomes plane three over here in our tree. <clears throat> and then what I want to do is I want to do kind of a mirror plane through this because there's really no other geometry I can really uh, grab from this to, uh, you know, to, to, to get another plane. So let's turn on our top plane. That's fairly close to what we want, basically in the general direction. And then we're going to click uh, Symmetry Plane. We've already selected this, the uh, frog scan data. And now we'll go ahead and select this plane there, uh, the, the front player top plane, which is pretty close. And you're going to see it's just going to use that as a general guideline. But then it's basically going to give us a mirror plane right through there. It's going to look at the scan data on both sides and basically find the... Uh... Okay, so now we can go ahead and turn off that top plane. And that gives us two planes or two axes, uh, pretty good to actually now set up a coordinate system. So we're going to come under uh, uh, here and we are going uh, to say orient the mesh. Um, uh, our selection will be planes and then we just pick which ones we want. So for example, if I want the Z plane uh, to be that one and let's make the X this one. Uh, you can see now I can set an orientation as well. Um, I really don't care for this. I just want to get it in a, a coordinate system so that when I do, you know, top, front, side type views, um, you know, we're going to get, we're going to get, um, uh, you know, a nice view. So now hopefully here as we go to those different views, um, you know, you can see uh, how that looks. So, so that's just a way to orient them, the mesh. So just to wrap this up, we've cleaned up this, uh, this file. And, uh, you know, from here, we could export a clean STL file that could be 3D printed. Um, we could go on and auto surface it and turn it into some CAD data. We can cut sections. We can extract freeform surfaces. Can't really use m many of these tools because these are more your primitive shapes. But that just shows you cleaning up a mesh that may not have been perfect to begin with and at least give you a nice watertight model. Uh, again, this being very organic, you're not really going to... Uh, uh, you know, uh, feature sketched uh, uh, this model. So it's really going to be, at, you know, auto surfaced and then you can work with it from there. But at least you can get something cleaned up that is very organic, make it a watertight STL file and at a minimum uh, turn it into a, an auto surface patch model.